In the previous video, we finished the story of Gaiac. If you haven't watched it yet, feel free to click the link to enjoy it.next. We will be telling the story of how Menki became the Great Khan. Exciting content is about to unfold, so stay tuned. In Thera of the Northern Prairies, chilling winds howled. And the grasslands rippled like waves under the wind's assault. Deep within these grasslands stood a solitary Mongolian tent. Standing alone against the harsh winter, on January 10, 1209, a baby was born inside this tent. The first child of Genghis Khan's youngest son Toli and his first wife Sulgatani Beki. The child's cries pierced the prairie's silence. And his mother Sulgatani Beki held him gently, her eyes filled with affection and anticipation. At that moment, an elder from the Huanghu Dota tribe slowly approached. He was a sage within the tribe, said to comprehend celestial events and discern the secrets of life. He walked to the edge of the tent, bent down to enter. And with deep set eyes that seemed as profound as the stars, gazed fixedly at the baby. He carefully observed the child, then fell silent for a moment before slowly speaking. This child is destined for greatness. His life will be filled with glory upon hearing this. Everyone showed expressions of surprise and joy. Vahilda took a deep look at the baby and said with heartfelt seriousness, let his name symbolize longevity. We will call him Menki, Gagedai Khan. This wise ruler, who would later be known as Emperor Taizong of the Yuan Dynasty, made an extraordinary choice. Before ascending to the throne, he adopted a boy named Menki. This young boy, under the future monarch and his Queen Mej Khatun, would spend his childhood. Queen Mej Khatun, a woman filled with profound maternal love, nurtured Menki in every possible way. She taught him the customs and rituals of the Mongols, how to become a true warrior, how to love his people, and how to understand the world. As time passed, Menki gradually grew into an adult. Saying this, Gaget Icon chose a woman from the Huliha tribe as his wife. This marriage, formed for the sake of a clan alliance, signified Monkey's formal entry into adulthood. In addition, Gaget Icon also allocated subjects to him, allowing him to gradually learn how to rule his people. However, in September 1232, a major event that would change Monkey's destiny occurred. His biological father Tolui suddenly passed away. Minky had to return to his homeland to inherit the lands his father left behind, how he would face these trials and challenges, and how his life would continue remained unknown. Minky stepped into his life with his silence and reticence. His life was simple, free from lavish desires, and his interests were humble. He loved hunting. This unassuming lifestyle contrasted starkly with his daring and fearless nature. He accompanied Gagedai Khan on numerous expeditions, making distinguished contributions each time and becoming a hero among the troops. The year 1235 was a significant one in Monkey's life. He participated in the Mongols' second westward expedition against distant European regions like Bulgaria, the Kipchak, and Volga. This campaign provided Menki the opportunity to showcase his valor, he fought alongside Bachu and Gaik, exhibiting remarkable prowess and earning fame through one battle. In this bustling campaign, Monkey's performance was the most eye-catching in a battle near the Caspian Sea. He personally captured the Kipchak leader Bokman alive. This battle not only displayed his courage and strategy, but also proved his capability to command an entire army in March 1248. A huge change rocked the internal structure of the Mongol Empire. At that moment, Menki, tested by storms, faced challenges once again. The death of Gaik caused the balance of power to tilt further. After Gaik's death, Kamiltai took control of the court, causing another shift in the empire's power center. Bacha, leveraging his status and power, refused to mourn for Gaik, undoubtedly intensifying the political tension in this power struggle. Bacha, Utilizing his status as a senior royal family member, sent envoys to invite the kings and ministers to his base in the Central Asian prairies for a coral tie. To discuss electing a new great Khan, this assembly signified that a new political storm was imminent. However, Batu's plans did not succeed. Most of the princes from the Gagedai and Chegatau families refused to attend after Kamiltai 
Only the minister Bola represented him. In this situation, the only one to stand out was Menki. Sorgatani Beki ordered her eldest son, Menki, to lead his brothers and family servants to respond to the call, facing the upcoming crisis. Menki showed no fear. He knew this was the moment for him to take responsibility and demonstrate his leadership, he led his family. Decisively embarked on a journey to the Central Asian prairies, stepping onto a new journey and entering a new stage of his life. In the year 1250, the biting wind, as sharp as a knife, set the stage for this Kuraltai, this assembly, held at Batu's base in Central Asia, was a meeting that would determine the fate of the Mongol Empire. In the meeting, Batu, relying on his authority as a clan king, vigorously praised Monkey's outstanding talent and his significant achievements in the Western conquest. He spoke passionately, his words piercing the silence of the meeting like sharp arrows. He was firm in his belief that Menki should be the new great Khan, but Batu did not stop there. He viewed Gaok's ascension to the Khanate as a violation of Gegadai's last wishes, questioning the right of Gegadai's descendants to succeed to the Khanate. This undoubtedly heightened the tension of the meeting. However, this meeting was not merely a clash of parallel lines. Under Batu's proposal, the assembly agreed to nominate Menki as Great Khan. But both the houses of Gagedai and Chagatai refused to acknowledge this, sparking new controversies. Therefore, Sulgatani Beki and Menki once again sent envoys to summon all the clan kings. To hold another Kuraltai by Pyonan River, Batu sent his brother, Burke, with a large army to accompany Minki to Tuanan River, but many princes from the houses of Gagedai and Chegatoi still refused to attend, which delayed the Kuraltai for a long time. Faced with this storm, Menki did not back down. He knew this was a critical moment to prove himself and establish his position. At the center of the storm were a mother and her son. Monkey's mother, Sulgatani Beki, was a highly respected woman. Like a star high in the night sky, she shone brightly, captivating the clan kings and nobles. Sulgatani Beki's power manifested itself through these repeated upheavals. Therefore, many princes and ministers finally agreed to attend the Kuraltai on the Bonan River in 1251. The wind on the grassland roared like the neighing of Mongolian horses, and history was being shaped. July 1st was a day destined to be written into history. On the bank of the Bonan River, Menki, with the support of numerous clan kings and ministers, ascended to the throne of the Great Khan. At this moment, Minki became the Great Khan of the Mongol Empire. On the day of his ascension, he honored his mother Sulgatani Beki as Empress Dowager. The power of mother and son shone together in the imperial palace of the Great Khan to consolidate Monkey's position. Sulgatani Beki suppressed the opposition without hesitation. Her heart was filled with concerns for her son's safety. She personally ordered the execution of Hamishin, regardless of the caste. She would protect her son, protect their empire, as the glow of the crown moved from the house of Gagedai to the house of Tolui, the map of the Mongol Empire was redrawn, however. Beneath this dazzling surface, a huge shadow was hidden. This was a game of power and glory, as well as a deadly war. Monkey's succession to the throne was not a simple transfer of power, it was a gradual distancing from the throne, eventually pulling the Mongol Empire into an unstable vortex, those unnoticeable cracks. Like the frozen layers under the northern desert, seemed solid but could crack at any moment. Laying the groundwork for the future division of the Mongol Empire, these fissures, which penetrated the heart of the empire, gradually became more apparent over time, pushing this powerful empire towards deeper chaos. The origin of all these issues can be traced back to the transition of power to Monkey's ascension and to the power struggle for the Great Khanate. Under Monkey's rule, the empire's domestic affairs, although tense, maintained a certain level of stability, however, at this time, two Uryats named Zhenhai and Salundi found themselves in danger due to their association with the House of Gagedai. These two Yidu were originally very loyal, but they were accused of planning to massacre the Hooch people of Bishiboli. During the Friday prayers, such serious accusations made them targets of persecution. A political storm had arrived, pushing the fates of these two Yidu to the brink, 
Despite their desperate resistance, they were eventually taken to Karakoram, where their lives tragically ended. In the palace, the sound of wind rustling could be heard in the quiet corridors Menki sat on his throne, watching the people below. He knew that this was just part of the game of power, and he was merely a participant. His mission was to protect this empire, preventing it from being torn apart by internal conflicts. In our next video, we will share the story of Monkey's conquest of the world. Please look forward to the content of the next story. If you like this story, please help us by subscribing and sharing. Thank you.